do your malep. Malep. Hey, what's up creatures? It's Em, and I'm back today with another creature feature. The series where I pick an animal and tell you lots of facts about them. Today I'm going to be talking to you about blue tongue skinks. Blue tongue skinks are a very popular pet at the moment, and they're also a fascinating lizard. So, I hope you're going to enjoy this blue tongue skink creature feature. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the creature crew, and also hit that notification bell down by the subscribe button so you don't miss a single upload. To help me today is Blue, my blue tongue skink. Ow. Blue only came to me a couple of weeks ago after her family couldn't look after her anymore and Danny, my fiance, found her in the pet store where she had basically just been brought in and he felt so terrible for her because her toes were in very bad condition due to bad shedding, so he brought her home. Some would call her a lizard. I call her an icon. Blue tongue skinks are reptiles. Being a cold-blooded reptile, they rely on the sun and heat in order to survive. If they are too cold, they become sluggish and unable to digest their food or move away from danger. Blue tongue skinks are very diverse and can be found in New Guinea and some of the smaller islands in and around Australasia. Some of these species look slightly different to the Australian blue tongue skink, such as this specimen found on Key Island. Blue tongue skinks have excellent eyesight. They also have the ability to hear. These are their ear holes. And speaking of those eyes, they actually have not one, not two, but three eyes. I know that sounds a little bit strange, but they have their regular eyes like we do for seeing, and then they also have another very special eye on top of their head. This is called the parietal eye. It's true, blue tongue skinks have three eyes. This eye right here is a photoreceptor called the parietal eye. The parietal eye is quite a unique sort of eye, and you can see this actually in a few other lizards, most notably in the Chuatara, but you can also see it in your pet bearded dragons. You can also find it on iguanas and of course other species of blue tongue skink. That parietal eye is key in helping these lizards to photoregulate or to measure light and dark over a period of time. The amount of light and darkness a lizard encounters over the year is different with the seasons. So when the light changes, the lizard's body is stimulated to produce more or fewer hormones depending on its needs for that time of year. Another theory is that parietal eye can detect the shadows of aerial predators hiding in the glare of the sun, which could explain why sometimes if you have your pet blue tongue skink or bearded dragon in your hand, it will wriggle when you suddenly move from an area of light to an area with more shadows. They also have nostrils for smelling, but just like snakes, they can actually use their tongues to help them sense their environment. Using their tongue and their Jacobson's organ, they can taste the air to find food, smell out mates, and detect moisture. Blue tongue skinks have an extremely varied diet. They are omnivorous, meaning that they actually eat a very wide variety of foods. One of their favorite foods though are snails. <laughs> and their big bulky heads are perfect with these wide set jaws in order to crush the shells of snails. In the wild, they won't only eat snails being omnivores, nope, they will also eat lots of different types of vegetation, some rotting fruits, even the rotting flesh of other creatures, carrion and other deceased creatures that they happen to come across. Blue tongue skinks have a tough armored back which is covered in scales. This can protect them from scratches and grazes, but it's not impenetrable. Those tiny little legs mean that the blue tongue skinks are very slow, which limits their ability to flee when confronted with danger, such as a predator. <coughs> Instead of running away like many other more agile species of lizard, the blue tongue skinks will face their threat, open their massive mouths and stick out their famous blue tongue. Shh. 
the contrast of their pink fleshy mouth and their long vibrant blue tongue is sometimes enough to confuse and deter predators. Some human tribes will even do this and the Maori people will actually gape their mouths and stick their tongues out as a way of intimidating foes. Some, but not all, blue tongue skink species can drop their tails when confronted with danger. This is called caudal autotomy and can be seen in gecko species such as the crested gecko. With blue tongue skinks, it costs them a great deal more effort to drop their tails, unlike crested geckos who can drop their tails simply because of a loud noise. The tail of a blue tongue skink will never fully regenerate, instead it heals over and becomes more of a stump. Let's talk about blue tongue skink babies. You may have heard of the term viviparous, meaning to give birth to live young. Dogs, humans, horses, rabbits, these are all viviparous creatures. You may have also heard of the term oviparous, meaning to lay eggs. Crocodiles, sea turtles, butterflies, these are all animals which are oviparous. Now, have you heard of the term oviviparous? A tricky one this one. When an animal is oviviparous it means that the babies develop inside eggs inside the female. Instead of laying eggs which are at the mercy of the elements or to predators where the female has to constantly sit and guard or just hope that the eggs make it, the female will actually keep the young inside her body within egg-like structures. So the female will actually retain the young until they are fully functional, ready to be given birth to and to enter our beautiful world of pollution and global warming. When the babies are ready to be born, the female will give birth to a litter of baby blue tongue skinks. When the blue tongue skinks are ready for the world, the mother gives birth. There can be anywhere between 12 and 20 blue tongue babies in a single litter. It's very difficult to say how long a wild blue tongue skink can live for because there are so many factors such as predators and illness and the natural elements, but in captivity people often say that they have seen them being kept all the way up until their 20s, so they are a very long-lived species indeed. Within the blue tongue skink family is the shingleback, or the stubby-tailed lizard. Shinglebacks are bulkier and more heavily armoured than other blue tongue skinks, and are quite a unique lizard in that they are monogamous, meaning that they pair for life. Professor Michael Bull studied the shingleback for 35 years. Professor Bull found that the shinglebacks can perform elaborate slow dances with the one that they've chosen to mate with for life. He also discovered that shinglebacks will share communal safe spots to sleep at night, and whole families of shinglebacks can be found together sleeping soundly. He also discovered that shinglebacks can accurately navigate well outside their usual territory and find their way back very slowly like homing pigeons, which explains how they can find their old breeding grounds and their mates year after year and they've been shown to grieve. Grieve, you say? How can you possibly tell that a skink is grieving? Sadly, many shinglebacks get hit by cars on the road because they are such slow-moving creatures, and some people have documented seeing the mates of deceased shinglebacks sit by their lifeless bodies for hours or even days, waiting for their mate to show signs of life. Many of the shinglebacks that Professor Bull studied actually stayed together for decades, so some lizards actually stayed together longer than some human marriages. Aww. <laughs> And that's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed today's creature feature. If you did, remember to leave a comment down below and let me know either your favourite fact or if you know something about blue tongue skinks, leave a comment down below to let me know your knowledge and share a fact or two for everybody else who might be reading. Thank you guys so much for watching, I will see you in another video soon. Bye!